Hello everyone. Today's reflection is based on the account of one of Jesus' healing miracles as found in Luke's Gospel, chapter 18. It's a touching story and contrasts the irritation and impatience of a crowd of people who are following Jesus with the Saviour's own loving kindness and desire to restore a sufferer to full life. Here's Deirdre. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard a crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Then he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who were in front sternly ordered him to be quiet. But he shouted even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and ordered the man to be brought to him. And when he came near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, praised God. This account of the healing of a blind beggar occurs in the three synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark and Luke. From Mark, we learn that the man's name was Bartimaeus. The accounts vary slightly from one gospel to another. Mark has Jesus and the crowd leaving Jericho, whereas Luke has them approaching the city. Matthew says that there were two blind beggars sitting together. But in other respects, the stories are very similar uh, and are undoubtedly variants one of another. The original almost certainly coming from Mark. What is it like to be blind? A few of you may have failing sight and have some idea of the effect of blindness. Being able to see is how we navigate our world. Many blind people in our society are adept at sensing their way with the aid of a white stick, tapping the ground and to either side of them to judge where there are things which will trip them or hurt them, such as curb edges or walls or bollards. Others have the wonderful help and companionship of a guide dog, who serves as their eyes and even their ears at times. But however you get round the problem, loss of sight is hard and total loss of sight robs you of one of life's greatest pleasures. No more colour, no more glorious natural scenes or wonderful architecture, and perhaps worst, no more faces, especially faces of people that we love and who love us, smiling at us, sharing emotions with us, making us feel secure. The face of a loved one is a precious thing indeed. We don't know, sadly, what Jesus' face was like. Some artists portray him like the male lead in a Hollywood movie, others as a rugged and muscular countryman, as he may well have been given his earlier life. And others, again, may even suggest that, as in Isaiah 53, he was not fair of face at all, but that there were many who were appalled at him. His appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any human being and his form marred beyond human likeness. Well, I rather think this latter idea to be unlikely or else because Jesus was of God and because God is pure love, that love would have been beauty written in his face, a face which, unlike most people, Bartimaeus could not see. What a loss. He was without eyes to see, yet Bartimaeus seems to have an insight into who Jesus was. Jesus of Nazareth is coming, is all the information he gets from the not very compassionate crowd. Well, Nazareth is a long way from Jericho, 86 miles, and Nazareth was a village of about 200 people. Jesus' reputation was obviously spreading, but he would not have been universally recognisable, yet Bartimaeus is able to call out Jesus, son of David. Now, I don't think Jesus ever refers to himself as that. 
Son of David is very precise, very specific. Bartimaeus somehow knows that Jesus is from the royal line going back to Israel's great king, chosen by God, David the shepherd boy. We might go as far as to say that Bartimaeus is proclaiming Jesus as the Messiah. It's comparable to Nathaniel's declaration to Jesus in John 1 verse 49. Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Bartimaeus asks Jesus to have mercy on him without precisely knowing what Jesus can do for him. But he trusts him absolutely and asks that Jesus restore his sight. And of course, Jesus does so, telling Bartimaeus, as he has told others he is healed, that it is his, Bartimaeus's own faith which has saved him and, by extension, healed him. There were many beggars in first century Palestine, often as a result of a disability. There was not usually much sympathy for them. They were regarded as having sinned or being the child of sinners and therefore receiving their just punishment. Bartimaeus certainly doesn't receive much kindness from the crowd, a crowd which is following Jesus. They don't seem to have grasped his message of love and forgiveness, neither of which they show to the poor beggar who, in his desperation, is disturbing the peace. It is Jesus who breaks down the wall of unkindness to have Bartimaeus brought to him for healing. Now I have a few thoughts for us arising from this story. Firstly, we should be bold in our prayers to God and not be discouraged. Bartimaeus would not be silenced because his need was desperate. Not only was he not afraid, but he trusted Jesus. And it was this trust which was his salvation, as Jesus tells him. Neither should we remain silent about our faith. How can people know why we do and say the things we do and say if we didn't tell them? without seeming self-righteous, that we are followers of Christ. Secondly, the recovery of sight was, for the Jews, not just a physical healing, and one which would require a miracle in those days, it was also a revealing of God's will and purposes for his people, and a bringing of the light to those in darkness. For there can be no greater darkness than that to which the permanently blind are condemned. It's not just physical darkness that healing banished, but the fear of death and the ignorance of God's love. The recovery of sight to the blind had been proclaimed by Isaiah and affirmed by Jesus when he spoke in the Nazareth synagogue. Few of us are physically blind, but we may at times feel that we are far from God, even alienated from him in spiritual darkness. We too can pray for the recovery of that kind of sight, a restoration of our relationship with God, one that he never severs, but which we may be finding difficult to sense. Trust in God. The light will return. Thirdly, after the miracle in Jericho, it was not only Bartimaeus who glorified God, but all who witnessed the miracle. Are you as I find I often am, slow to thank God when something wonderful happens, a prayer answered, perhaps for healing or for the resolution of a problem? Are you, as I sometimes still am, somewhat embarrassed and reluctant to say openly when such a wonderful thing happens, praise God, regardless of whether those who can hear me are believers or not? One of our duties and delights as Christians should be to glorify God, and finally, the Gospels are full of accounts of Jesus healing people. But all healing is of God, however it happens. Let's give thanks for all the wonderful healing work being done by medical practitioners and research scientists from the most mundane level to the most cutting edge. We are so blessed in the 21st century that healing, so hard to come by in Jesus' day that people walked long distances to receive it from him, is now ours almost on demand. Yes, we are going through a difficult phase at the moment and some will suffer longer because of that, but things will return to normal and even better than before because the fight against COVID has opened the eyes of scientists to wonderful new treatments and cures. 
and let's give thanks for all the medical benefits that are ours for the asking. We can always, like Bartimaeus, turn to Christ in our times of need. There is such comfort knowing his desire to heal us because he loves us, however that healing happens. Amen.